Hello everyone, welcome to another session of EA22101 Evolution and Paleobiology. I'm recording this video today from another Dreek day in central autumnal Manchester. It's looking like it's going to rain, it's dark already, don't quite know how that happens since it's like 10am. Anyway, today I'm going to be talking to you about conservation paleobiology. So we're going to have three videos and then we're going to cover some more um, of this material in person. So over the course of the, these videos in the in-person session, we're going to be talking about what conservation paleobiology actually is. It's always worthwhile defining our terms. I'll then give something of a deep time perspective. So this is an idea of what fossils can tell us when it comes to conservation, how fossils can inform modern conservation efforts. We will look at environmental stresses, so we'll see the impact that environmental stresses can have on ecosystems, illustrated using a bunch of examples from fossils, and we'll start by looking at single stresses on environments, but often these things are like buses and they, they come along, multiple ones um, at one time, and so then we'll, we'll kind of scale that up to look at the impact that multiple environmental stresses can have on environments and that multiple stresses we're going to be doing in our in-person session. We'll finish <clears throat> with a few more case studies and by looking at something that's not the same as conservation biology but kind of uh, I think thematically fits here quite well which is called geoheritage so that's how we look after fossils themselves and make sure we're looking after our, the heritage that is given to us. So I hope you'll find this interesting. I think it's really um, it's a really valuable thing to be looking at and it's really important that we cover it in this course. But I would also highlight that it's a relatively new field and it's really in the last decade that it's come into its own to be recognised as a standalone topic to really kind of, I was going to say congeal, that sounds kind of pejorative, kind of mean, but kind of it's only solidified into something that people call themselves like I am a conservation paleobiologist, maybe in the last 10 or 15 years. And it's also an area that I don't really claim to be an expert in. Much of the teaching that I, I've done over the course of the last few weeks has been in areas in which I've got extensive um, research experience and so I'm kind of, uh, I'm, I'm playing to my strengths. Whereas this is an area that um, I haven't done any research in, and so I've, I've obviously learnt about it over the course of writing these lectures. So I've essentially, for this, this um, series of videos and this um, in-person session, relied on other experts to draw together representative and interesting case studies that I'm presenting you today. So with that context, I wanted to gratefully acknowledge the influence these um, sources have had. And there are two key sources that I've put on the slide here, which I found incredibly useful while writing these lectures. So these are um, either review papers or they're reports from um, meetings. And papers such as this or reports such as this are really, really valuable if you're not an expert in the field, because they allow other experts to say to you, okay, in however many pages, these are the things that we think matter about this field. So to that end, if you want to learn more about conservation paleobiology, if you think this is a really interesting and exciting topic and one you would like to explore further, these two sources are a really good place to start. And with that, I will call it a day for this video and I will see you in the next video down the page and then also in our in-person session, uh, either next week or this week, depending on when you're watching this video. See you soon.